Hi there, Chris here, another quick tip for you all. In this video, we're going to continue our look at painting the Questor Knight from the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower box set. In this video, we're going to continue our look at painting the cloak of this guy. As the previous video, we had worked on the backside and created a nice blue effect on there. And so for the inside of the cloak, we're going to go with red. And so for that, we're going to grab some corn red and very quickly, uh, we're going to lay it out. Well, we're going to work on the hair as well. <laughs> we're going to work on the hair as well, as is a, a minor little uh, detail. Now, the, the model and the box art, uh, just the hair is red, along with some other accents uh, on the model. But I figured uh, the inside of the cloak would also look really kind of cool in a darker kind of uh, red tone as well, as we kind of have this pretty much dark tone going over the entire model anyway. And so very quickly here, we're using the corn red. And because it's a base, uh, we are thinning it out with a little bit of Lemayne medium and applying it. Um, because it's a base, uh, it is really rich in pigment. And we only have to apply about two coats uh, onto the model, uh, sitting on top of that black primer there. And so very quickly, we just simply work our way through and lay out the base coat. And once we're happy with how it is laid out, we simply come back in with some corn red and some Xeris purple. Xeris? Xeris purple. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a two brush blend on the uh, cloak and hair. And so really quickly, I take the Xeris purple and lay it where I basically want like the shadowy darker points of the hair. And then with another brush loaded with uh, corn red, I begin to uh, almost like a dry brushing method, but I'm working against the grain as well, allowing some of that purple to reside within some of the uh, creases further along in the hair. And basically it's giving us a nice little color blend through the hair. And again, I just, if I need a little bit more purple, I just simply throw a little bit more in there and begin blending it out. On the backside of the head here, you can see there's a big, large area where you can get lots of uh, blending to occur. And when we're doing two brush blending, you don't have to do it on a flat surface. It works on, on hair as well. I find that uh, uh, even like the wolf character models and stuff like that, that you can get this uh, two brush blend to work and create some interesting effects. And essentially the Xerxes purple is just giving us a darker tone throughout the red. Uh, not so much giving us a black tone or any kind of darker brown tone normally we'd use for red. And I figured I'd go with purple as it'll also blend well with the blue of the cloak and blue uh, that we'll be laying out on the armor as well later on. So once again here we simply just take, lay out the purple and then begin laying out the red and then just kind of blending the two together really quickly. Again, it's this is a two brush blend method. Uh, both brushes have the color on them and you just got to be fairly quick about it and you can pretty much achieve it fairly fast. Another way you can also use retardant as well. Uh, gives you a longer working time, but uh, with smaller areas like this, I find that just a simple two brush blend uh, gets the job done. Here you can see I'm taking a fairly uh, large amount onto my bristles and begin scrubbing in this entire area that is a shadowy area. And then really quickly, I come in with the corn red and begin blending it upwards. And then I want that upper edge a little bit brighter. So I simply take a little bit more corn red there. And again, just back and forth really quickly. Um, again, you don't have to really too much worry about uh, brush strokes or anything like that. Uh, they're very, very minimal. The color also is a little bit thinned out with just a little bit of the water uh, in the bristles. That also helps keep the paint uh, flowing relatively smoothly. And once that is dry, I come in with some corn red real quick here and I just put a little edge highlight just to kind of clean up some of the areas of the cloak, kind of brighten it up. Uh, again, I'm going for more of a deeper red tone on the cloak, but without going all the way to the brown kind of colors as uh, really the gold of the armor uh, is, is uh, taking up all those brown qualities. And so I didn't really, that's reason another number two why I went with purple as the shade. Wazdaka Red is next, and this is going to be dry brushed on, and I got my medium dry brush here, and basically starting from the ends of the hair, drawing inwards, closest to about, uh, about two-thirds of the way onto the hair, I dry brush in the brush strokes, and again, doing on the back side of the hair as well. Again, not going the entire length of the hair, concentrating more of the brush strokes at the ends of the hair, getting it all nice and bright, as again, we want to have this nice gradient of color occurring onto the hair points so again we don't want to go too far in and for the cloak we are going to basically do a feathering technique uh for that and you can see on the back side of there basically just lay the corn red and then uh with a damp brush 
uh, draw the excess paint away from one side and cre basically create a color blend in that fashion. Um, you can see here with the corn red, just lay a little bit on the brush and with a damp brush, you just draw out the one side and it creates this gradient for you. And so just really quickly working our way through the model. Again, I wanted a little bit more brightness on that uh, on that point there, in that central kind of fold, as more light would catch there. And of course, just a little bit on the upper edge, just to bring a little bit more brightness back into that. And so again, you can see you're just very quickly laying it out. Again, sometimes if you're not too fast, uh, you can kind of get this watermarking to occur, but it doesn't really take much to uh, kind of uh, erase that. And so again, you can see, Again, we just create this nice little color blend. It's almost like glazing or taking the paint down to a glaze consistency, but not quite. It's it's a feathering technique. You just simply just you know draw the uh, the excess paint away. Here I'm simply just edge highlighting the cloak with a little bit of this Wazdaka red, and that goes for both sides of the cloak. Next is some pink horror. And normally with the reds, we don't go into uh, pinkish colors. We often go into the orange-yellow kind of spectrum. And so I figured I'd go with the uh, a lighter tone here. Again, I kind of like these guys with the gold and the way we had uh, laid out the shadow colors with the armor, uh, giving us more of an ancient kind of color. And so I figured uh, we'll go with a little bit lighter colors on the hair and the cloak. And so here I'm just simply dry brushing just those corners very lightly. Making sure that I'm not hitting any other points of the model, of course. And so you can see we're simply just catching just those edges. And that's all we're looking for here with this color. Again, with the hair, it's just like the last third of the hair. We're, we're highlighting there again just to get a little bit more brightness on the ends. Again, it gives us a little bit more of a subtle tone. It allows to play more with the blue and the, uh, the sharper contrast of the armor against the, the uh, more faded color of the hair. Changing pink, the dry compound is next, and you can see really quickly here, I'm just kind of laying a little bit of the color down. If you get a little bit of excess onto the onto the model, you can simply just take your finger and just kind of wipe the excess off the model. And again, it also gives you a bit of like a feathering effect as well with the color. So here I'm just catching just the very tip of the uh, cloth, and just the, uh, just the very minimal highlights. That's it, it's really not a whole lot. But that is it. That is the painting, the uh, Quester Knight's cloak, the interior. Uh, it's as easy as that. Do not be afraid to give it a try, especially with all the blending and everything like that. We've got even more painting tutorials in the Silver Mini Wargaming Vault. You can watch another one today about how I paint the blue sections of this guy. Just click the link in the video description below and watch it right now. If you don't have a Mini Wargaming Vault membership, you can click the link and sign up for a free 7-day trial. Just make sure you get the silver membership so you gain access to all the painting tutorials and you'll get instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in the vault. And so thank you for watching. Happy Wargaming.